<laughs> okay, let's, let's crawl out of the rabbit hole, sir. About slow, really slow play. In. Yes, please. Really what are we waiting for these guys? Hey, Whitey, where's your hat? Let's go while we're young. Slow play, man. So I think Woo. it's interest. It's interesting coming off the Wyndham and them having to make up four rounds in three days. Uh, pros play slow. I, I hate watching Aaron Rye. He is like, he, he just, it's just like that one little extra five seconds of, of hovering over the ball and making decisions that aggravates me. He's just like the latest example. But, uh, I mean, overall, we just see this over and over and over again with slow play. I found this article and it just kind of talked about it from the course perspective. And I, I also found that very interesting as well as we, you know, say, hey, a lot of times the onus falls on players. But this article talks about things that the courses could do better from a setup perspective. And I agree with a lot of the things that they say. So, of course, tee time intervals. Um, when you think about the time that some courses give you on the card to complete a hole. And if the tee time intervals are tighter than that, it's very hard to <laughs> kind of expect people to finish. I've seen as tee times tight as seven minutes apart. What is at Wildcat? What are y'all's tee time intervals? 10 minutes. See, and to me, that seems beyond reasonable, right? Anything to me less than eight, eight is pushing it. Again, eight I've seen bad, seven. Dude. We tried eight. It was bad. It just created a lot of gridlock. Yeah, there's nowhere for you to go. It's three people. It's three T-Soms on each on each hole. You're literally playing station to station. You go, you hit a ball, you sit down. You go, you hit a ball, you sit down. You go, you hit a ball, you sit down. No matter if it's a par three, doesn't matter if it's a three shot uh, par five or a reachable par five. Everybody's hanging out, and then before you know it. There's three groups on each tee box and you just look thirsty for money. And now you're getting a bunch of bad reviews, bad experiences and anger coming off the course. Then put that on, put that on top of hot ass Houston humidity. Then put that on top of only one beverage cart on each side. Then put that on top of people not playing good. So now they're more frustrated. Then you're driving off and somehow somebody hits the shot of their life and kind of hits the ball right up to you. Now we got some situations. <laughs> Nobody right. can find a marshal. I mean, oh my goodness, bro. The things that we yeah. hear in the pro shop, and it's always after the round. Never in the middle. Never yeah. when it can be never when it can be um productive or something can be done about it. It's always, you know what, I got something to tell you. And it's like Okay, well, let's hear it. Give us a chance to correct the situation. So the first uh, dental office I ever worked in, uh, we had a sign on the door that said, if if you had a good experience, tell others. If you had a bad experience, tell us. Tell us. It's a pretty simple concept, right? Pretty simple concept. Yeah. But I don't want to get bogged down. Um, the next thing that they mentioned were course conditions. And so I think I'm experiencing this. I don't know what it is. Like we haven't had rain, like a significant amount of rain, probably since going back to mid July. We've had some days here and there, but really not a lot of rain. But cut the rough down. Stop Ooh, making it where too. the rough. Oh my is god, rough. man! Right, right now it is. Rough. You're. It's hard to find balls right off the fairway. And I get it, like different parts of the country have have different course conditions, like different grass types, right? So South, you know, Texas, you're talking about Bermuda. And for yeah. long, leggy Bermuda, it, it almost just swallows up the ball. Like you said, you have to be right over the top of it. And so there's been a lot of discussions in my group about utilizing the gallery rule. Like we all saw the ball come down in this general area. Rather yeah. than pacing back and forth, search party style, like you walk this line, 
I walk this line and then we we you know shift it. We but yeah, same middle. thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So many balls right off the fairway have been lost to the to the rough. And I think that's a huge point. Like, dude, we're not playing, you know, as professionals. So just cut the right. rough down. <laughs> Help us right, out, please. please. Or and that's the thing. If you want to have thick rough, make the fairways wider. That way, if it's really bad, then it's really bad. But if it's not that bad, don't penalize me by having 15-yard fairways and then all of a sudden the rough is three inches, two inches, stuff where I can't find the golf ball. That slows up pay, too. Because next thing you know, oh, we all hit good balls. Two guys are looking up the right, though, because they ran through the fairway into the rough, and they can't find it. Now the guys that were moving and grooving, yo, man, what happened, bro? We were just doing good through the first eight. Now these guys, what's happening? Now they in the fairway. We don't know what's going on. And now they now they hanging out. And now the and bed car the, grill comes through. Then they oh, got to yeah. buy drinks. Then it It's don't, always it at the worst time. Bad timing. Bad timing. I'm getting ready to hit my second shot. All the homies are like, yo, hey, it's the Bev cart. Now all four of us are at the cart. We getting drinks. And everybody still needs to hit their shots into the green. Now the now the group in front of us is already teeing off on the next hole. And now we're a hole behind. Because we was key keying and somebody was fake throwing, you know, throwing Hail Marys at the Bev cart girl. That's already got two dudes numbers and on a receipt she don't want. I mean, bro, okay. it's so ridiculous. <laughs> Mark is going all kinds of uh, uh, rabbit Listen, holes. the stories we hear. <laughs> no, the stories we hear. I mean, truly, like Boy. the girls. But anyways, back That's... to your point of slow play. Exactly. <laughs> okay, <laughs> let's, let's crawl out of the rabbit hole, sir. <laughs> about slow let's reel slow back play. In. Yes, please. Back in. <laughs> and so it's like, dude, um, the, yeah, like you said, the group behind you is now pissed off at you because we lost the ball in the rough and had to look for it. Again, yeah. preventable stuff, especially in summer conditions. Cut the um, rough down and just make it, you know, humane for everybody. And and we can probably True. save. I, I want to say, okay, so check this out. Played 20, this Friday minutes. late. Played with three... Um, double digit handicappers and we're talking like 20s plus um and then me i just showed up late and ended up getting matched up with a couple dudes in our group that talkers one was a talker but again we're talking about like a probably 30s low 20s and then like a 28 so not hitting it not hitting a lot of straight balls but as someone who gets, I, I, I get anxious when I'm, when there's slow play and groups are creeping up on us and right. it's like, you yeah. either got to have somebody in that group to keep things moving. And that was me. Right. So dude, one of the dude, the talker was talking on the green. I'm like, yeah, all right, bro, let's keep it moving. And that's just, I'm that, I'm that guy. Cause getting yeah. pushed or, you know, feeling like people breathing on us and it's our fault. And I know it's our fault just aggravates me or if it's like right. dude just drop one and not take your penalty if that if that's what it comes down to because to me if, if you're shooting in the, you know if you're a 20 handicapper dude a couple shots that i give you throughout the round aren't impacting anything on my right. you know radar or whatever so let's just keep it moving again gallery rule i saw it in this area take your distance yeah. let's keep keep it keep it moving or whatever you're about to shoot an eight nine or ten it's freaking yeah. cool you, you um, shoot a 120 compared to a 115 ain't really gonna do nothing for us brother come on right so I, i'm gonna go down another so my our mom says i want a bev cart to be a bev cart girl no, you don't of course no, you <laughs> anyway. don't. so it's funny because i've been on like this tiktok um, just like obsession. I don't know lately, but it's just been caught catching my social media time. And this chick that um saw, she's like, I quit my corporate job, you know, making two hundred thousand dollars a year because I just wanted to do something else. And so I was reading down the comments, and there were several people that were attesting to 
wanting to be a Bev Cart girl, one that had transitioned into being a Bev Cart girl, and actually in person a couple weekends ago, met a young lady at this course local to DFW. They have a halfway house kind of um turn a club you know whatever and mm-hmm. this chick seemed out of place and so i asked her i was like oh it's surprising you know you're out here or whatever and she's like yeah you know i work at home during the week but this is my weekend gig and it's been really good i was like that's crazy but i believe it so it's very interesting mom but that comment but i don't think you're ready for bev cart talk i don't think you're ready mom no. anyway so interesting story on zyre that kind of brought this up i saw the article one but then saw this um desire post from earlier in the week which i had saw on on reddit as well but um let's see if this is up on my screen cool i want to read through this really quickly um guy says had a great round of golf going through seven holes until my threesome encountered a group of 10 at the next tee box we politely asked if we could play through were declined and then looked on as all 10 golfers took their tee shots Bro, one, this right is now. on the golfer's side. We we absolutely would have to throw fists. I I, I just we ten, can fight right now. Period. I have encountered like my group. Some occasionally will say, "Oh, we have an odd number." End up with five, and they're like, "They're like, call the course and see if we can play five." five. Even that, even five gives me the anxiety because I'm like, "Dude, this is too slow." Um, and we know every golfer does not play efficient golf. Like, hey, drop me off, go to your ball, I'll walk over to you, etc. cetera. Oh. But 10 dudes putting it out, that's nah. just to start that off. And the fact that nah. they would not let them play through pisses me off. Nah. Yeah, right. I, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, see, like, this is the type of thing that saves me sanity after reading that part alone, I would have just exited the interview. There's no, ab- there's absolutely no way I can read the rest. But no. go ahead. <laughs> okay. I just and the fact that he said he was having a good round three seven holes. That you know, I feel bad for the dude because that completely takes. Yeah, you, you out already of your an hour. And, yeah, you are an hour and a half in almost. Coming up, so we on call like the a club. decent pace. So this kind of then inter- intermingles back into what we were talking about to start this. We called the clubhouse and course marshal, both of which were completely useless, before deciding to skip the hole entirely and jump to the next tee box. Just as we're about to tee off, the lead spokesperson for the group of 10, because there's always an asshole, approached us and after a brief exchange claimed that they had approval from the course and accused us of being disrespectful and in the wrong. A textbook lesson in gaslighting on the golf course. We don't even really have to go into that, but the the disrespect was on the ten some side. And if some if they yeah. told them they could run ten, that's a ridiculous golf course, and I would never go back. I'd find every form to plain and give them bad reviews. I'd be on golf now, Google, Yelp, everywhere oh, yeah. I could post a negative review. I'm going there. Uh, swarm, sure. <laughs> whatever. No, truly, um, you got me fucked up. Yeah, thankfully, all golfers in my group promptly fired three bombs straight down the middle of the fairway with the gallery looking on. We kept it civil for the rest of the round, but had to endure a few few near misses as a party of 10 shot a few balls within 20 yards of us in the fairway and green, which I'm assuming with that, that there were, you know, player, the course itself seemed to be backed up and badly mismanaged yeah. if they were still having to wait. But again, the Tensum should have been letting people play through the rest of the day. Yeah. Um, the real sh- the real shame here is that I likely would have broken 90 for the first time, if not for the blank in my scorecard on hole number eight. I don't know. I question that because, I mean, I think mean by the blank? rules of like, yeah. I mean, I know they skipped the hole. But essentially, I think reading USGA rules from like in the past, then if you skip a hole or if a hole's under construction, that you just write down par from what I've understood. Yeah. Um, and then you also know what you finished. I don't know if that just got him flustered and he just lost his crap after that. But this, the round is what the round is at that point. Um, you know, and I think he asked some good questions here. Are us golfers left with any other options when selfish pricks like 
these guys act like a public golf course is their own private backyard. To me, it's just confrontation and fisticuffs. That's that's, that's where I go. Yeah, I don't know, man. Like, dude, you're not going to confront me um, with your tensum about. No. Like, that's that's crazy. You literally ganging up on me. Absolutely not, bro. Absolutely not, bro. Listen, I mean, as soon as I pull up on a tensum, I'm going to the pro shop, bro. And I'm not a guy that does that. Oh, we we not going inside to get it to get refunds. I don't play on days where it's raining. I don't have any excuses to leave. Thankfully, I've never been in like an emergency or anything like that where I've needed to just up and leave and have to even, you know, deal with the rain check or or a refund, yeah. a partial refund or whatever like that. But I'm not having it any other way, bro. We going to inside. I'm getting my money back, and then I'm talking shit on my way out. Like, there's just absolutely <laughs> – there's just – we get, like – I get beside myself when it's I, we hear of like six playing together. Oh yeah, yeah. they started out, you know, it's it two threesomes out, and then they merge. Right, thank you, Rod. You already know how yeah. you already know how I'm coming. Pause. But Hold like on. that's what I'm saying though. Go ahead, Bobby. Um, Bobby, slow play is the worst. I lost a friend to it three years ago. <laughs> Oh, bro. Yeah. Um, pl- cute. That's I feel like we should have some sad music playing in the background. That sucks. He pay- he played slow and bad, so I ghosted him. Seriously, stopped answering his text. Says a lot about a person. I agree with like so many parts of this. So, what's yeah. the rule? So, in this this section here, he played slow and bad. What's the rule, Marcus? I'm ghosted as well. It's no, no, it's no. But like, but if you play, oh. you can play bad, but you got to play, play bad, bad fast. Though. Yeah, play you bad. Do. You got to be more aware. Be self aware, please, please. Yeah, and that's yeah, that's no, where I'm it says a, a lot about the person. I'm gonna just pick up. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm gonna sit in the car. Y'all got it till the next hole. It's cool. You know my score ain't really worried about it anyways. And then my handicap ain't gonna be affected. I'm still gonna be a thirty plus handicap. Thank you for understanding. I'll see you in the car. Give me one sec. I mean, like, right well, for real. I mean, Come for on, real. Like, it's just. Ain't no money on there. Don't, don't have everybody. Just, we, we just homies for right. real, bro. Take that shit off, right. bro. Especially at that big of a gap of skill level. Um, True, again, bro. just just play efficient, decently paced golf. Be ready to hit yeah. your shot when it's your turn. Um, again, cart etiquette. Drop me off. Go to your ball. You know, take your your range finder, whatever. If if you need right. to walk up to the green, if I hit the green and you're still chipping up, take some clubs with you. There's so many yeah. ways to get around this, but um, it's like dominoes. Don't study long because you study wrong. All the things yeah. I mean, that I'll pick up your, I'll bring your putter to the green for you if you need me to. Like you want me to shoot the yardage for you? I got you, bro. I'll shoot it right quick. I got you. Okay, it's about 150. What's your 150 club? Okay, wins in two. You know, grab a couple clubs. I'm going to hit my shot. I'll be right back. Or walk up to me. I mean, right, bro. You know what? We'll talk about this offline. Yeah. I'll talk about this off air, yeah, you can, you can, No, I'm, I'm not listening to your ranting. Well, I get it. <laughs> You're trying. Anyway, slow play. Slow, oh slow play is the worst. And there's just so many ways to prevent it. Um, clearly so, we've talked about it. I think I have an old video. It's called slow play is an epidemic. It was kind of based around, uh, Patrick Cantlay at the time. We talked about a lot of the stuff that happens on course, but this, this occasionally just pops back up. And then there's, you know, again, there's never a good reason for it, but golf really has to figure it out. Five hour rounds yeah. are completely unacceptable. You, you get a lot of stuff out of this channel, y'all a little business knowledge, you know, a little technical golf knowledge, a little BS in here and there. You're you're in a well-rounded environment. <laughs> so uh, hit that subscribe button, hit that membership button. Um, we got you covered on all things golf.